Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, uh, I've got a video for you today on an interesting Morse code key that uh, many of you might not have heard of, some of you have heard of, but fewer of you might know the history of. So I thought that I'd talk about it a bit, and uh, I also made one, so we'll get to that. So what I'm going to talk about today is the Sideswiper, otherwise known as the Cootie Key. Now a Cootie Key looks like a regular old paddle. Uh, but it's not a paddle in the sense that, uh, well, it only has one contact instead of two contacts. A cootie key is more like taking two straight keys and laying them back to back, right? So their handles are out like this, and regardless of which way you push, you're, you're engaging the same contact. Now that seems like an odd design, but it has a history. But for that history, you need to look way, way, way back. Uh, back in the early days of telegraphy, okay, we're talking the mid to latter part of the 1800s. And at that time, the uh, telegraph system was new, and it was high-tech, you know, it was cutting-edge science. The ability to send messages across long distances over the wire was, was an amazing thing back then. I mean, electricity was just being, getting to be understood. Um, and so telegraphy was a big deal. And telegraph op offices popped up all across the country. Um, and it was possible to send messages, of course, city to city and eventually across the entire country. Uh, but inside those telegraph offices uh, were guys that that's all that they did for their job was sit there and send all day long. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I'm sitting there on the straight key, uh, two or three QSOs, um, I start to get just a little bit tired. Uh, now, there's, you know, hardcore CW ops that, that can do it all day long, uh, but for me, sitting there pounding away on a straight key for an hour, hour and a half. Um, it's not only physically a little bit tiring, you know, the wrist and the hand get a little tired, uh, but also it's a little mentally tiring. But the mental aside, the physical side of it, imagine if that was your job, okay? If you went to work in the morning and you sat down at a desk and all you did for seven or eight or even ten hours was send Morse code on a straight key. Ooh, I can't even imagine. And in fact, they had problems. Um, back then they called it glass fist, or telegrapher's paralysis, or glass arm. Uh, nowadays we know it as carpal tunnel syndrome. Uh, a repetitive motion on one axis, right? So like with the straight key, you're pushing down, right? The muscles in your arm are pulling to, to push your fingers down and then raise it up, but it's that constant repetitive motion that will stress the, uh, the tendons in here. The tendons in your wrist go through these sheaths that, that protect them and, and separate them from each other, and that constant motion in there um, stresses it out, and, and that's carpal tunnel, right? And they had that problem with the straight keys. Um, in the later 1800s, uh, there were there were several different key designs that were trying to combat this, changing the amount of tension, the amount of travel, and so on. Uh, but somewhere around the, the late 1880s, um, a guy named Bunnell uh, patented uh, the Sideswiper. And this was a key that worked sideways. Um, like a paddle, you had an arm that came out, but you had one contact. All right, so it went back and forth and made two contact points, but these were tied together. So it was just like a straight key, not like a paddle where you had a dot on one side and a dash on the other. It was the same on each side. And how long you held the contact, just like, just like with a straight key, determined whether you were doing a dot or a dash. And uh, the way that it helped was you have a side-to-side -side rocking motion, right? So you're kind of splitting the difference in... in in tension with your muscles, they're, they're pulling in either direction instead of just in one direction and not pulling as hard. And so that at least cut in half the amount of stress you were putting on your forearm. And it was the first design to come along that actually reduced a uh, glass arm or telegrapher's paralysis that actually made a difference. And, and so it, it became pretty popular back then. 
Uh, it wasn't long after that, um, just a few years after that, that uh, somebody came up with the bug, uh, the semi-automatic key or the bug. Uh, let's see, 1892. You know, so just uh, four years later, um, they patented the bug or the automatic key, and the sideswiper fell to the wayside. Uh, but it's still around. Uh, up until just uh, just a decade or so ago, there was actually a commercial uh, key that was still made. Uh, let's see, it was available from Morse Express, and it was the model GH GHD GF501 Speed Key. Um, I looked and I couldn't find that it's still available, so it might have been discontinued now. However, lots of people uh, build their own cootie keys. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, cootie key... I looked and looked and looked, and I cannot find where that name originated. <laughs> but it used to be called, or it still is referred to as a cootie key. So I don't know where that came from. But if we go and we look out on the web, there are countless images of, uh, of cootie keys, or side swipers, where people are building their own, uh, building them out of simple wood and, and metal. Um, trying to make them look a little bit more commercial and nicely built there. Look at that. That's beautiful. You know. Uh, but the original is still... Well, I've got a picture of the original, actually. Somebody has one in their collection. There it is. That is the Bunnell um, Sideswiper that was patented in 1888. Look at that. Uh, man, somebody's really got a gem in their collection there, don't they? Now, as you can see, um, these contact points here are joined. They're, they're a solid piece of metal, so it's one contact here and one contact on the key arm that are electrically isolated and then connected here. And uh, bingo, you've got your side swiper. So that's the original. That's the Bunnell side swiper. Okay, um, so we know what it is. We know uh, why it is or why it was. And we know a lot of people are making them now. How do they uh, how do they work in practice? Well, I'll tell you what. I built one. Okay, um, I made. Let me go and show you here. I just posted it to Thingiverse. I will put the link in the description down below in the video. Um, I used the uh, the old 3D printer back there and uh, designed this in on shape. In fact, let me show you the on shape design. Okay, so here is my cootie key. Now up here, I, uh, I did uh, 3D printed leaf springs that come off the arm, slide into these notches down here, and that's the return to center. It works really well. These are the contact points up here. You only need a couple of screws. Um, you put a washer in here, about a 15 to 17 millimeter washer, slides down in there and then makes contact through this little hole here with either side, you know, screw on either side here. And then I put these channels in here and here and here for the wiring so it's a, a much cleaner result when it's all done. So I designed that, I printed it, I've got it sitting over here on the desk. And I've got the GoPro pointed at it, so let me show you show it to you here. So this is the cootie key, and as you can see, it's um, one contact, so it's the same either side. You have to do the dots or dashes by how long you hold the contacts in, and you just do a side to side motion. Now I've only been practicing, I've only been practicing for about five minutes. Um, and I'll tell you, it's going to take a little rewiring of my muscle memory because I keep wanting to use it like a paddle. But let's, let's just uh, see if I can do a little quick CQ with it here. See, I screwed up. I, I, I did the dots on the same side. You're supposed to keep rocking back and forth. Let's try that, let's try that again. <laughs> oh, a little sloppy. Um, but anyway, I will put the uh, link to the Thingiverse files in the uh, video description down below if you have a 3D printer and you want to print your own key, uh, your own cootie key. Um, or you could make one, as we saw, they're pretty easy to make. So that's, a, that's the history of the Sideswiper. Um, 
and why it exists. And it's the key that uh, a lot of people just don't know about. Well, now you do. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.